What's up, y'all? It's Mari here with First Updates Now, and we are currently in the Archimedes Division at Champs with Team 6328 Mechanical Advantage. Now, personally, I'm going to go a little bit bananas over this one because they have some pretty cool stuff that we're going to see. They are currently here after winning their district event at Rhode Island, as well as one of the founding members of the Open Alliance. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. So first we're going to start it off with Advaith and he's going to talk about their intake. So tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so it starts here with our, for cubes specifically, it starts here with our ground intake. It's full width. Um, so this can pop down and the end effector will position itself to pick up the cube uh, right as it comes through this roller. Yeah, um, so that's our, that's our path for our cubes. Um, for the cones, we do not have a ground intake. It goes straight into the end effector. And yeah, so that's how we intake both game pieces. That's super cool. So a lot of teams I've seen have had like a little bit of a wider intake. Yeah. Have you guys ever run into any issues with having a larger intake like this? Uh, yeah, so first when we were prototyping, we, we ran into the issue of uh, having an efficient handoff without the cube kind of flying out without getting into the end effector. Um, but we actually found that it was easier than we expected. Um, well, one thing we did was have, we had uh, polycarb flaps here that would direct the cube into the end effector. But after some time, we realized that it wasn't even necessary. And um, with these uh, flywheels running, uh, it was able to pick up cubes either way. Um, so, yeah. That's super cool. So just like a game piece, let's go and transition on into the arm. So, Matthew, will you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so that transitions us to the arm. So we have a double-jointed arm with a wrist, or a three-jointed arm. So we have the wrist here that hosts the end effector, and then we have the second joint right up here, and then we have the shoulder joint down here. So, and then this entire arm can swing through itself to allow us to score on both sides of the robot. So on one side, we have the cube intake, obviously, and then the end effector. So we use custom gearboxes for the bottom, and this gearbox is located in the bottom. And then this gearbox feeds into this cross shaft here. This shaft is a max line, dead axle max line. And then this is then chained up to our first joint. So our first joint is mechanically coupled, but down here. So that allows it to not like twist. So then now that leads us up to the second joint. So for the second joint, we have another custom gearbox. Uh, this is actually the second version of our arm. So on the first version, we had, um, it was basically made of uh, press fit max line. So it's super flexible and springy. And we used uh, max planetaries. So this was really backlash ridden and had a lot of spring in it. So after our first competition, we decided to redesign the entire thing. And then this is when we introduced the custom gearbox. So this allows us to have much less backlash than the max planetary does. And then, Along with that addition, we separated the joints from the links. So our joints are completely separate. So there are these black parts with uh, quarter inch aluminum plates inset into them. So this basically gives the strength of a billet aluminum part without being billet aluminum. So this is super easy because we don't have a CNC machine that's cap capable of machining billet aluminum. So we just uh, cut quarter inch plates on our router and then these are PA12 nylon printed on bamboo. So these are a little bit stronger than Onyx, Mark Forge Onyx. And, and then those lead up to our links. So these links go up, and then we have another dead axle going across. And then our second link here. And then at the bottom of the second link is, is where our end effector is. And then this is powered by a max planetary up here, because we're not as concerned about backlash as the first two joints. Awesome. I'm really a fan of how you guys do the thing where you turn the cone. We've seen that only on like one other robot, I think, this season. And I really think that's a cool idea. I'm very proud of how you guys came up with that concept. So, 
Speaking of the wrist, do you think we can go on over to the outtake? Yeah, Advaith, so can you take us back with that one? So for the outtake and scoring, um, as we talked about earlier, and Vector can do both game pieces. Um, so as because our arm can pass through ourself and it can articulate this way, we can also do tipped cones. Um, and the way we would score that is um, by articulating the arm in a way where the, the end of the cone would uh, be on the peg. Um, for normal game pieces, uh, this would just go up to uh, um, up to the node with our preset, and then um, outtake by spinning these uh, wheels out. Um, yeah, that's essentially how we score. That's super cool. Now, Jonah, I really would love to speak with you about you guys' driver station and yeah. all the crazy things in software. So, yeah. there's this node thing over here. Yeah. And I'm kind of interested in how it works. Fantastic, yeah. So all of our pickup and our scoring is autonomous. So this is a, a touchscreen, our driver station. And on the right, the operator is selecting which node to score on. So they, ju they just tap to select a node. And then the, op the driver holds down a single button as we are entering the community. And the software completely takes over the drive and arm in order to, to get us to the right place, raise the arm, and score. The reason all of that is possible is on the robot, we have four cameras that we use for April tag tracking. So there's one on the left, uh, one pointed backwards to the right, and under the intake, there is a camera pointed forwards. So we have a very wide field of view. We also have four coprocessors on the robot. So there are two orange pies on the left and two orange pies on the right. Those are running custom vision software. So there's one, uh, one coprocessor per camera. Now, as we're, we're compiling all of that data, each uh, coprocessor, there we go, each coprocessor generates an estimate of where it thinks the robot is on the field. So as we're driving around, the Rio is merging data from its internal, from the encoders on the wheels, from the gyro, and from all of the cameras. So even during teleop, as we're driving across the field, if our odometry is ever offset, we have cameras that will re-zero ourselves. That means we can be spinning around defense, going through the middle of the field, and as soon as we enter the community, we have plus or minus half an inch and one degree of precision uh, from viewing April tags. It's pretty rare that we see no tags on the field. And this means that in general, our driver and operator can concentrate on high level strategy, on which node to score on, as opposed to doing all of the precise alignment. Yeah. Wow, that is some of the craziest software I've seen today. I am thoroughly impressed. Mm. That is amazing that you guys thought of that. And it's yeah. super innovative. Mm. Yeah. Well, I've had a really good time talking mm -hmm. with y'all. 6328 Mechanical Advantage, I really hope you got the best in your competition. Good Thank luck. Thank you very much. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.